At the next shooting session, while Seyun Hian was reading the script, a sweet voice echoed, Hello, senior. You worked hard today. He warmly responded, Ah, Wang Sura, did you sleep well last night? How's your body? She cheerfully replied, Yes, I slept well. Thank you very much. Hearing this, Seyun Hian was very pleased, All right then, I still have some free time until shooting. Would you like some coffee? Does Jean Kyung also want some? The manager was extremely surprised, How? How do you know my name? I heard Wang Su mention it, he honestly replied. Kyung politely responded upon hearing this, You have a good memory. Sura suddenly felt curious, Senior, where do you plan to sleep after filming? Here, he was surprised, Well, it's quite cold. My back hurts, and I was planning to go back to my room, but I heard that I had some good scenes. His casual remark made her excessively tense, What about you? Aren't you catching a cold? But Seyun Hien reassured her immediately, Nonsense, I sleep in my manager's room, I also sincerely apologize. Sura's eyes suddenly became embarrassed with her thoughts, Yesterday, I also thought about it, but the senior is indeed bad-tempered. Suddenly, someone's greeting surprised them, Hello, Kong Seyun Hien, her face darkened when she realized it was Kim Chonggu, he innocently asked, the actress next to you plays Suji, right? What's her name? Wang Sura felt a bit uncomfortable, she tried to keep calm, regretting she couldn't cover his mouth, feeling curious inside, what is he saying? Chongdu continued unperturbed, thanks to your scenes today. I saw it yesterday, you two must have worked all night? While Sura was about to angrily shout, Seyun Hien. This information left Sura somewhat bewildered, why? Senior, did he attend a wedding? Seyun Hien's unexpected question was raised, where did you go sightseeing yesterday, which made him hesitate to ask again, why? Seyun Hien said, it seems like you're the only one who doesn't know I filmed until morning? Chonggu, angered, remained silent for a moment, quickly regaining composure, he smiled slyly, after filming, I returned early to rest so I didn't hear any news, I apologize. Seyun Hien replied challengingly, Apology? Is that all? The tension between them began to rise, right on time, Wang Su unexpectedly appeared, calling out, Kong Seyun Hien, why aren't you two getting ready for the shoot? Then, he greeted Kim Chongba warmly, Today you've had a tough time filming, huh, then whispered to him, What are you doing? Today's a public shoot, with many journalists present, do you want to make headlines again? Upon hearing this, he quickly suppressed his emotions with a sigh, then grabbed some food while mocking, Kim chong marrying a member of parliament's daughter just to gain power? Wiping the sweat off. The anger of the traitor reached its peak, compounded by Kyung's mocking attitude, oh, scared now? Some kind of expression? Go on, Sura, just leave. His rage was such that he couldn't contain it any longer and bluntly asked Sura, Hey? So why did you go to Kong Seyun Hien's room? Did you stay up all night? Why? If you're involved with Kong Seyun Hien, you're in trouble. Want to see? His absurdity infuriated Kyung, who replied angrily, Exactly. No need to see anything. Because I don't want things to become a mess. Sura made a strong effort to intervene, Sister, let's just go. This Kim Chongda's mind is so simple that it irritates me. Can't he think of something more sensible? He was still about to retort when she interrupted him, Did you forget what the senior said about wiping the sweat? Pretending to be tough? I don't know how that brain of yours remembers the script. Initially, he seemed excited, even taunting, impressive indeed. But very quickly, his body tensed up with anger, growling, Ah, Wang Sura. You, you, you're quite something. If you're good at something, just stay put. On the beach later, everyone was busy preparing for the next scene, the director was reminding a few small notes to the actors, the story has changed slightly so I'll explain, all the dialogues for the beach walk scene will be removed, 
and a different voiceover will be used. It doesn't matter what you say while walking since the sound will be muted, but I'll focus on the emotions, especially Suji, the character still doesn't know anything, so she just needs to smile happily. That's the scene where Suji will recall memories, ultimately deciding to commit suicide, so you shouldn't show any sadness or happiness. Wang Sura widened her eyes and quickly responded, yes. The two of them will talk face to face, capturing emotions, and then move on to the scene where they hug each other, they will hug each other as a couple, I'll add details later, the director added instructions. The two of them replied in unison, yes. The director still seemed somewhat worried about something, he said, Miss Wang Sura. Upon hearing her name, she replied, yes. Suddenly, he noticed Seyun Hien's gaze at him, so he quickly changed the subject, oh, no need, just learn the lines and start shooting. Sura politely replied, yes. While Seyun Hien stood silently, puzzled, hmm, why looking at me if you want to ask her? Quickly, Seyun Hien and Sura stood in position to prepare for the shoot. The assistant came to touch up Seyun Hien's makeup, while Sura was also attended to, enhancing her beauty. The director announced through the walkie-talkie, ready. Yo Jean, Suji, get into position. At this moment, Suji was extremely nervous, oh my, I'm so worried. Seyun Hien took the initiative to pull her closer. She looked at him with a surprised expression, Senior looks so relaxed. That's right, the partner actor isn't Kong Seyun Hien, but Suji's lover Yo Jin. It feels like we're really in love. She reminded herself not to make the same mistakes as yesterday. The director shouted, Action! Camera starts rolling. Both of them strolled along the beach happily like a real couple in love. To create genuine emotions and reduce Sura's anxiety, she initiated a conversation with Seyun Hien, this is our first time, so I'm worried. I don't know what the director will say about our scene where we talk to each other. He smiled and instructed her not to talk too much, just to be herself. You didn't have breakfast this morning. If you had this in the evening, then have that for dinner. That's it, he said, smiling. Oh. I didn't mean to say that, Sura replied with a smile. She immediately followed his advice, leaned on his shoulder, and said, yeah, that's right. What are you having for dinner tonight? Seyun Hien was extremely surprised but followed along with the random dialogue, yeah, I want to have pork with tabaki sauce, like how it's served in those fast food restaurants. Sura, curious, exclaimed loudly, really? What's that dish? He asked her back if she had never tried it before, saying it's delicious. Finally, the camera captured the moment of affection and happiness between them. The director, observing, couldn't help but praise them for their excellent performance. The conversation between the two is not over yet. Seyun Hien told that he has a question, it seems like you and Kim Young Wan have met before, so did Mi Young also come as a guest after that wedding? The question struck her like lightning, leaving her stunned as she asked, why? In her heart, there arose a sense of unease, did he see it? Sura hesitated, um, did you see it? Seyun Hien looked at her and replied, I think I did. Glancing over, she noticed that her emotions had flown away. Gathering all her confidence, she said, um, I was just a little curious. How do you two know each other? You and me, Yang, he replied. However, deep down, she felt differently, I'm sorry. Actually, it's the first time in my life that I've seen that scene in a restaurant. But I didn't know you and her were acquainted before, I didn't see. At that time, at the restaurant, Seyun Hien introduced our fathers as friends. Sura silently thought that if the conversation continued, she might be in danger, so she cleverly shifted to another topic. Um, I should be upset now, but the problem is I can't control my emotions. Seyun Hien was very comforting, saying, you did well controlling your emotions and expressions yesterday. She was astonished by his reassuring words. Seyun Hien continued, may I ask what you were thinking at that time? Sura trembled as she uttered, um. 
She had to struggle with herself, she couldn't tell the truth, but those vague thoughts. She decided to be honest, it's just that I've been introduced for a few years now, but why am I like this? Why am I so foolish? Those thoughts. Seyun Hien stood there, contemplating, and gently recounted, to explain it would take too long. One day, I went to shoot a commercial to earn some extra money. And that day was the worst. The director went crazy. Have you heard of Lai Sung? Sura was surprised to hear him mention it, that director is famous. He continued to confide, at that time, I thought I was going to hit him. The lead actor in the commercial asked for my name, but I didn't have any reputation at that time. The person who asked for my name, I didn't want people to know my name, so I decided. She stood still for a few seconds, suddenly realizing, and me also? Seyun Hien didn't say a word, just looked at her intensely with poignant eyes. She felt shy and thought to herself, what's this? How is this possible? Tomorrow I have to return to that miserable life. I know those loving eyes looking at me are just acting. But I want time to stop. I don't want to let go of this hand. If only I were Heijim, not Suji the female lead, how wonderful it would be. Her eyes were on the verge of tears, she was about to let go and turn away, but Seyun Hien quickly pulled her back and hugged her tightly. Everything felt so real, and Sura's cheeks flushed red. He whispered in her ear, Look, you did it. Her voice blended with the sound of the waves, Thank you so much, Senior, for asking my name, for paying attention throughout the shoot. I will always remember. Seyun Hien looked into her innocent eyes and said, If you cherish it, you will succeed. If we could meet again as co-stars, it would be wonderful, she said with a happy smile. Watching Seyun Hien hesitating as if he wanted to say something, she waited expectantly. Perhaps, he said, lightly touching her cheek. Sura widened her eyes in astonishment and asked, Why? He boldly inquired, Have you ever kissed anyone before? She was extremely surprised, hesitant, and replied, Kiss? Um. I've never kissed anyone before, but maybe now I think I could. Seyun Hien smiled at her words, leaning closer to her. Sura closed her eyes to begin to feel, her mind becoming chaotic. Finally, Seyun Hien lightly kissed her forehead, leaving her pleasantly surprised by his unexpected gesture. Seyun Hien gently said, I really can't wait, Sura. Please don't cry too much. As Sura returned home, she was still lost in the dream from earlier. Jean Kyung, noticing her standing still like a lost soul, hurriedly asked, Sura, have you finished packing? She suddenly woke up from her reverie and replied, Oh, yes. It's just a one-day trip, so I didn't bring much. Kyung noticed a program and told Sura, Look, they must be here to interview the lead actor for that entertainment news. There was a chair set up in the middle of the stage, and Sura instinctively asked, Sister, when will I get to sit there? Jean Kyung chuckled and asked, why? Are you jealous? She confessed sincerely, no, not at all. I'm just a little frustrated. Why can't I get tired even after running so much? Jean Kyung hugged her and kept encouraging her, then just work harder. Don't you want to experience the feeling of exhaustion? Sura innocently asked, exhaustion? Aren't you the one who's so tired that you can't stand? Jean Kyung empathized with her experiences, just like drinking a glass of cold water and continuing to run, I've been training for endurance for seven years now. So let's start with the first place banana, shall we? Sura leaned her head on Kyung's shoulder, finding a solid support. Suddenly, her sister's face changed to one of shock. What? Wait a minute. On stage now was a handsome young man, Kim Chonggu. Jean Kyung, with a grim expression, said, You see what I didn't want to see before leaving. He's such a cheapskate, extremely cheap. Let's go, Sura. If I look at him any longer, my eyes will rot. Sura hurriedly responded, yes, but she still lingered to have a look. To her surprise, Kong Seyun Hien also appeared on stage, and he and everyone else happily chatted. Seyun Hien's smile was even brighter than the stage lights. 
A sudden stream of thoughts emerged in Sura's mind, strange, the man who stood near me just a moment ago now seems so distant. No, I forgot momentarily because he was only polite to me. In reality, he's in a very different position. That's why. He's famous for his tall stature and handsome face. He's a talented actor who can portray perfection, perhaps sensing beauty without needing his permission, touching a Halu star adored by fans across Asia. Maybe our lives and paths will never intersect again. Yes, until yesterday, that was reality. Why? Sura blushed as she remembered the intimate moment with him and quickly fanned herself to dispel the embarrassment, I must be crazy. What was I thinking? Jean Kyung, confused, asked, What are you doing, Wang Sura? Sura quickly turned back, replying, Oh, nothing, just coming. But in her heart, she still harbored many thoughts, strange, the feeling of regret is because I still have emotions for Suji's role? If not, then. The filming session also concluded thereafter, with the adorable host smiling gratefully and expressing heartfelt thanks to the guests, all three of them. Despite being very busy, you still participated in this interview. I'm truly grateful. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. The crew members immediately began packing up the equipment. Great job, everyone! I'll take care of the machinery. Meanwhile, Seyun Hian hurriedly looked around to find someone, feeling worried as he wondered, has Wang Sura come back to Seoul yet? He returned to his apartment late at night. The building manager, Wang Su, informed him from the hallway, I'll wake you up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. You've had a hard day today. Seyun Hian politely replied, yes, thank you. Please rest. Stepping into his room, his tiredness was evident on his face. Shooting from morning till night, and continuing until 11 p.m. the next day. Was Director Gu some sort of supernatural being? He glanced at his beloved bed, surprised to find everything neat and tidy. He usually made his bed before shooting to ensure a good rest, but this was too clean. His room was tidier than ever. Entering the bathroom, he gently turned on the shower, water splashing everywhere. Indeed, even in the act of showering, a handsome man exuded a captivating charm. Images of Sura kept appearing in his mind, every expression, every little detail on her face, he remembered vividly. Even the innocent, naive smile of a girl. He quickly turned off the shower, droplets continuing to drip down from his head. He stood still like a statue for a long while, lost in that vague longing. The next morning at the filming location, a desperate cry echoed through the set, and everyone rushed back, asking, Kong Seyun Hien. Seyun Hien. Wang Su hurriedly ran back, asking, Are you okay? Another supporting actor appeared, holding a wooden stick, continuously explaining, Are you okay? It seems like I hit you. I'm sorry. They said to do it like this during rehearsals. Seyun Hien politely interjected, No, it's my fault for not paying attention. I'm sorry for scaring you. Wang Su kept pressing, Are you sure you're okay? He returned, Yes, I'm fine. His hand was stained with blood, causing the manager to panic, blurting out, Director, we need to take Seyun Hien to the hospital immediately. The director agreed, All right, take him to the hospital first, then see if he wants to continue shooting. Wang Su quickly assured, We'll be back soon. The one who caused the accident was trembling, apologizing repeatedly. Wang Su exerted all his strength to rush Seyun Hien to the hospital as quickly as possible. Wang Su intended to ask something more, but Seyun Hien quickly diverted, we're almost at the hospital. Upon arrival, he confidently strode away, leaving the manager lamenting in despair, Hey! I'm talking to you! What's going on? Are you afraid I'll find out what you're thinking? Seyun Hien whined, Come on, I'm in pain. Let's talk later. Wang Su, infuriated, shouted, Do you think I don't know you're pretending to be hurt to avoid me? Is that fake blood? He challenged calmly, do you want to find out? Real or fake? The manager, resembling Conan, deduced sharply, according to my keen reasoning, your life has been turned upside down since leaving Busan. More precisely, since Wang Sura who traveled with Jin Kyung left Busan. Seyun Hien chose to remain silent, offering no explanation. Wang Su confidently asserted, you think I'm right, don't you? 
Se Yun Hien stared at Wang Su, making him feel a bit intimidated. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Se Yun Hien smirked, don't you know you just reveal the weakness? Wang Su was utterly confused, what? What did I do? Se Yun Hien coyly replied, I don't know, you're the one who knows. The manager, annoyed, asked sharply, what do you mean? Se Yun Hien teased, why do you keep mentioning Jin Kyung? Is her name always on your mind? Wang Su blushed furiously, frantically explaining, No, it's just that Jean Kyung is like a manager, you know? We play poker together in the group because she always goes with Wang Sura, so I remembered her. Seeing Se Yun Hien's lack of response, he awkwardly asked, Hey, Kong Se Yun Hien, are you listening? In Se Yun Hien's mind, the name of a girl always appeared Wang Sura. It couldn't be denied. Meanwhile, at the general hospital, the doctor was updating Se Yun Hien's condition. The wound isn't too deep, it won't leave a scar. However, you should still be careful and avoid overexerting yourself in the next couple of days. Wang Su breathed a sigh of relief, that's lucky. Se Yun Hien sat there, worried about the next two or three days. He didn't know if Director Gu would sympathize with his situation. However, upon learning that the director had instructed, Se Yun Hien, you should rest for three days to focus on healing, Se Yun Hien felt a sense of relief. The two of them stood staring at the director, causing him to be startled, what's wrong with you two? Wang Su, surprised, thought to himself, I thought he would ask me to shoot a few scenes without any action, but I didn't expect him to give me three days off. Not long ago, Wang Sura was also injured. I wonder if he cared about her too. As darkness fell, he and the manager returned to their familiar apartment. In the room, Wang Su was deeply engrossed in jotting down something. Se Yun Hien curiously asked what he was grumbling about. Wang Su replied, Se Yun Hien, if you're shooting the men program on Wednesday, you should change it to the day after tomorrow instead. The director asked, can I change the schedule to next Wednesday? Since the topic of men is quite relaxed, it won't affect your injury. After hearing this, Se Yun Hien could only remain silent in exhaustion, you're not even giving me time to rest. I might have to find a new manager. Wang Su felt happy hearing this, thanks if you do that. Then I'll change the schedule. Take a rest. I'll make some drinks. Se Yun Hien was about to intervene, hold on, let me. A while later, Wang Su came back with a bunch of barley drinks, enjoying them while watching TV with delight. Se Yun Hien felt uncomfortable and asked why he was sitting here drinking. Don't you need a quiet space to rest? Wang Su pointed at himself and said, You may be able to deceive everyone else, but you can't fool me. Upon hearing this, Se Yun Hien stood in stunned silence, then blurted out, Oh my god, I can't deceive him no matter what. What were you going to say, Mun Wang Su? He was drinking beer, glancing at him, then suddenly slammed the beer can onto the table as if asserting something. They sat in silence for a while before Wang Su gathered the courage to confess, I really admire Jean Kyung. I know her quite well enough to give reasons for liking her. I think someone who is fascinated by her job is really attractive, an ideal type, isn't it? Sung offered some suggestions for Wang Su to convey to her, then suggested exchanging phone numbers. Wang Su, feeling discouraged, said, how can I convey it over the phone? If I want to say something, I have to meet her in person. Oh, actually, even if we meet, I wouldn't know what to say. Let's stop this conversation here. Sung continued, what about you and Wang Sura? How far have you and Kong Se Yun Hien progressed to the point where he's so distracted during filming? He quickly sought an excuse to evade, what's the matter? Why are two grown men playing this game? It's ridiculous. Se Yun Hien angrily retorted, don't change the subject. You know you're not like that, except when you have work issues, right? It seemed like Wang Su hit the nail on the head with Se Yun Hien, so he didn't protest but just shrugged as if hinting at something, maybe you've encountered it too. Wang Su gleefully remarked, see? I knew it. Se Yun Hien, puzzled, asked why he was so excited. Wang Su switched to his managerial mode and advised him sternly, you're not a 90s idol anymore, you're grown up now. I don't want to prevent you from dating, but don't make it too obvious. If the public finds out, it will affect your work, and that won't be good for either of you. Se Yun Hien, feeling uncomfortable, asked, 
But why do you keep nagging me like this? He listed a series of reasons why the advice given could support him in his work, but reminded him to be careful. I'm afraid you'll spiral out of control and cause a lot of trouble at work if you continue to act like you have been recently. He sat there, pondering over the words of his manager. After the conversation, both of them resolved the issues they had. Wang Su became happier as well. One morning in the bustling city, with traffic hustling on the streets, Sura lay sprawled in the car like someone lacking vitality. Jean Kyung looked at her and said, Have a productive workday. Half asleep, Sura replied, You too, sis. She spoke to her in a state of sleep deprivation. Jean Kyung worriedly asked, Are you okay? Since filming the scene in Busan, maybe you've been in the water too long, and it has affected your health. Let's go to the hospital together to get checked. Sura smiled brightly and said, I'm fine, sis. We've been filming that movie for three weeks now, and I've been following his activities on almost all social media platforms. Jean Kyung cheerfully suggested, Sura, do you remember that wonderful cafe we used to go to? Do you want to drop by and have some coffee to wake us up? She answered, do you mean at the Eden Cafe? Sura and Kyung were moving upstairs. When they got there, she was very surprised because it was the weekend, so it wasn't very crowded. Sura gently replied, I rented it out. Kyung proactively said, I'll go get the drinks. Sura was glued to her phone screen, engrossed in the game, which was very challenging. The game app kept playing failure notifications, and she was so frustrated that she pressed her face close to the screen, I won't stop until I solve it. Kyung returned with the drinks, and Sura irritably said, Sis, you came at the wrong time. Can you play this round for me? I really can't. Suddenly, she froze for five seconds. The person sitting in front of her wasn't Kyung but Seyun Hien. He gently took her phone and asked, What's wrong? Is this an optical illusion? Or a maze? Sura was so shocked she went blank, confused, What's going on? Am I dreaming? I thought senior Kong Seyun Hien was supposed to be filming in Busan. She shrank back, watching him play the game, just hearing him speak was enough to make her flustered. Seyun Hien hesitantly asked, Can I play another round? She replied, Sure, but what are you doing here? He said, I have some work to do here, then he focused back on the game. The two of them sat in silence, not saying a word to each other. To break the awkward atmosphere, Seyun Hien started to open up, the thing I like. He hesitated for a moment and then continued, that thing is. Her eyes widened as she looked at him, seemingly very eager for his answer. Sura was extremely surprised when he mentioned her. He sat still like a statue, gazing at her, then smiled mysteriously, I. Suddenly, he stood up, slammed his hand on the table, handed her phone back to her, and turned to leave. Sura picked up her phone to see what was happening. He had entered his phone number into her phone. Kyung smiled admiringly, that was perfect. What just happened? Kong Seyun Hien, what the heck does he eat to talk so coolly? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Did you see that? I've got goosebumps. Seeing Sura sitting with her head down on the table, Kyung waved her hand and asked, Hey Wang Sura, are you listening to me? At this point, she snapped back to reality and asked, What, you saw it? Kyung smiled and said, Was my acting good? Should I quit being a manager and switch to being an actress? Sura stammered, What, what just happened? Kyung gently asked, You know Kong Seyun Hien's manager, Wang Su, right? Sura answered, bewildered, Yes. She began her story, When I was in Busan, I exchanged phone numbers with him. He contacted me a few times after I returned to Seoul, but yesterday he suddenly called me and said that Kong Seyun Hien got injured while filming. Sura was extremely worried upon hearing this, what? Why? Kyung decisively pointed at her and said, it's because of you. Sura, shocked, asked, why me? Because of me? Kyung had to reveal the truth, why? It's probably because he kept thinking about you and got distracted during filming. Wang Su said that it has reached the level of an accident, so he made a reservation for the two of you today. She blushed and asked, What do you mean he lost focus because of me? Kyung keenly noticed, You're smiling, haven't you heard? He asked if you remember or think about him. 
Anyway, sorry for not telling you beforehand, but he came back to shoot a magazine photo shoot. I didn't know his schedule, so I'm not sure about this meeting. Sura quickly interrupted, Wait a minute, so you're saying that senior Kong Seyun Hien got injured because he was thinking about me and lost focus? And he also asked if I remember him? What? Kyung confirmed, yes, that's what he said. Sura began to realize the situation, so that means senior Kong Seyun Hien. Kyung smiled admiringly, that was perfect. You still can't believe it, can you? She helplessly had to confirm once again, yes, it's true. Sura's face turned bright red. She looked very shocked about this, oh, what should I do? Taking the opportunity, Kyung said to her, what should you do? Pick up the phone and call him. I'm sure Kong Seyun Hien will answer right away. Then tell him that you miss him a lot too. Honestly, if you didn't have those thoughts, I wouldn't have arranged this meeting. After filming, you secretly talked with Kong Seyun Hien too, right? At this point, Sura had to admit, well. Her thoughts ran through her mind, this is an unexpectedly interesting experience. Kong Seyun Hien, the person I met on set, is wonderful and perfect. But in this matter, he's similar to Kim chong There's no one in the world as caring, kind, and attractive as he is. I can't imagine he's like that. Of course, senior Kong Seyun Hien might be different, but I still don't have the courage to face or confirm it. The conversation between the two fell into silence. When they got home, Kyung happily announced, Sura, look, since it's the beginning of the year, there are lots of casting announcements. The upcoming movie looks pretty good, what do you think? And director Lim Jio's work at the end of the year is also very promising. Contrary to her manager's excitement, Sura just stared at her phone. Her face showed determination, but within three seconds, she reverted to being a shy girl. Sura sadly put her phone down. Seeing this, Kyung took her phone and said, Give it to me, then casually typed a message for her, Contact me. Sura pleaded, Please, don't. As soon as she finished, she quickly took her phone back. Kyung seriously shared, Come on, didn't he tell you to contact him? If not, then forget him. Why make yourself suffer? Sura sat in a corner, slowly expressing her feelings, I'm so worried, I don't know what to do. Kyung looked at her sadly, finally deciding to sit down and hug her, saying, Sura, I understand, but don't you think Kong Seyun Hien is a good person? He cares, has feelings, and is kind too. Suddenly, old memories flooded her mind. At first, Kim chong was like that too. He pretended to be kind and perfect in every way, as if there was no one else like him in the world, and you didn't even realize it. Kyung defended, hey, that's not true. If that garbage Kim chong could act in front of a camera, he would have won a K-Net award by now. She softened her tone and said, anyway, the conclusion is, if you're attracted to Kong Seyun Hien but don't trust him yet, you don't have to date him right away. Just keep in touch and get to know each other slowly. Sura said something that made her choke up, but if it's not that case, then what should I do? Immediately, the other changed her approach, hey, don't say that. Let's have a drink. Who knows, maybe alcohol will give you the courage to call him. She hesitantly agreed and made the call while drinking, even more impolite, and she didn't know what to say. Kyung kept encouraging her, why not? Just say you miss him. How about drinking to gather some courage? She consistently refused, I won't drink, sis. However, her sister continued to persuade her, don't worry. If you call him and say something silly, I'll stop you. Dujia teased her to the point where she couldn't hold back her laughter. The problem lay there. After a while of persuasion, she stubbornly insisted that she didn't want to. Somehow, in the end, her older sister also got tipsy. What are you doing? Drink more. Surprisingly, Sura's alcohol tolerance was even higher than Kyung's. She kept babbling and calling. Jean Kyung encouraged her, Come on, I'll drink, you drink too. Don't pretend to be drunk and then fall asleep like that. Her sister, almost intoxicated, advised Sura not to push her anymore. Sura felt helpless, sitting still for a few seconds before lying down on the bed, complaining about feeling dizzy. Eventually, she realized that she still hadn't called her senior all day. Anyway, I have to do it to avoid keeping him waiting too long to call, 
right? Okay, who answers the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning? Or should I text? She rolled back and forth, contemplating until nearly 3 o'clock in the morning. Her expression was adorable. At exactly 3 a.m., Sura made a decision, okay, I'll text. Gathering her courage, she picked up her phone. If she sent it, he would see it in the morning, making it difficult for him to avoid, as he would just be waking up. In any case, the message would last until she was sober again. She meticulously composed each word, Senior, it's Sura. After finishing the message, she still seemed hesitant, contemplating. Then the moment arrived, the message had been sent. Just after sending it, she felt so embarrassed that she buried her face in the pillow and exclaimed, I sent it. Then, she took a deep breath to calm herself down, time to sleep. I've done what I needed to do. I'll deal with everything in the morning. Time to sleep. Just as she closed her eyes for a moment, the phone rang, startling Sura awake. She quickly reached for her phone, her face filled with surprise as her eyes fixed on the screen without blinking, an incoming call from Senior Kong Seyun Hien. She became flustered, wondering what to do. If she didn't answer, would it be okay? After some hesitation, she decided to press the answer button. A soft voice greeted her with a hello from the other end of the line, but there was no response. Sura gathered her courage to speak. But before she could say anything, Seyun Hien asked if she was drunk. His voice seemed to transport her soul into a dreamy space, it sounded so nice. She calmly asked, how did you know? Seyun Hien replied, you messaged me. I didn't understand anything. Sura was astonished, oh, really? I was so careful when I sent it. How did you wake up? He answered, I haven't slept yet. Are you outside? She gently responded, no, I'm at home. He curiously asked what her plans were for tomorrow. Sura replied that she didn't have any plans. He spontaneously made an appointment, let's meet tomorrow to clarify what you messaged me. After hearing that they were going to meet tomorrow, Sura was utterly surprised. Why did Seyun Hien keep teasing her like this? Did she swear in her messages? Sura quickly denied it, insisting she wouldn't dare. Seyun Hien reassured her that he would send the address and time for their meeting tomorrow. Hearing this, Sura shouted out loud, wait a minute. A prolonged silence followed, leaving her stunned. What just happened? She trembled, pondering how she would manage tomorrow. Surely, she would have trouble sleeping tonight. Early the next morning, the weather forecast announced, next is the weather forecast for today. It is predicted to snow heavily in the Jeonji and Seoul areas, but due to high temperatures, the weather will be slightly cold for those going out. Back at the familiar cafe, Sura arrived very early to wait. Thankfully, she woke up before the appointed time. She rushed because she feared being late, arriving half an hour early, but... Suddenly, her sister Jean Kyung called. She quickly answered, Yes, sister? Kyung asked anxiously if she was outside. Sura replied, I just arrived. Kyung couldn't believe how quickly things were unfolding and asked where she was. Sura, a bit suspicious, wondered if Kyung was meeting a colleague. She noticed Kyung was dressed nicely today and found it suspicious. Do you have a boyfriend? she asked. Caught off guard, Kyung immediately denied it, saying, what? Why would you think that? Do you think I have time for men? I'm always by your side. Sura seemed to sense something. Now you're panicking, aren't you, she said. So, you do have a boyfriend. Kyung continued to deny it, saying she wasn't. But a waving hand made her feel awkward. Hey, hey, hang up, she said. Meet me at Sura's house. Sura looked at the phone, feeling suspicious. Analyzing Jean Kyung's recent behavior, ah. She might have given her number to Wang Su in Busan, and they might still be in touch when she returned to Seoul, but there were no signs. So maybe not. Now she should worry about what's going to happen to her. As she pondered, she reapplied some lipstick to freshen up, adjusted her hair in front of the camera, and tried to style it. There, I still have plenty of time. Let's take a picture. Suddenly, her eyes widened. Seyun Hien was standing behind her, when did he get there? Hi, he greeted gently, leaning in close, his eyes sparkling sweetly. Why did you arrive so early? 
Sura was so embarrassed she couldn't even look up. She always acted strangely in front of him. Ah, uh, you're here, she managed to say. He sat down politely and said, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. She quickly replied, no, not at all. It's not time yet, and besides, you don't look like a celebrity at all. She chose a topic to talk about. It's snowing heavily. Did you have any trouble on the way here? But he turned the question around on her. Sura, have you ever taken a speeding taxi during the day? She was surprised. No, I haven't. Why do you ask? She thought she might get a sweet response, but he just suggested she try it next time. It's convenient for getting to appointments, he said. Ben does the same. She chuckled, you're right, but you only got a bland response. And with that, the conversation hit a dead end. She thought to herself, this is so awkward. She glanced up at him discreetly and noticed his eyes always seemed to be on her. She quickly looked away, thinking, why is he staring at me like that? Suddenly, he called out, startling her. Hey, he said, causing her to jump. Yes, yes, she replied nervously. Seyun Hien reminded her about last night and asked her to explain the message from yesterday if she was awake now. Sura was stunned, recalling last night. He handed her his phone, saying, I don't understand what you were trying to say. She took the phone, her face full of confusion. Weird, I checked it carefully before sending it to him, she thought. Her expression changed drastically, and her hands started trembling. Is this the message I sent? She could only gasp, oh my gosh, did I send this? The message read, Senior, I'm sorry for bothering you at this hour. I am Wang Sura. I am very happy and grateful that you took care of me, but at the same time, I feel a bit awkward. In fact, I just went through something very hurtful not long ago, so I might need some time to feel better and to see who is truly sincere with me. Can you just be a senior who takes care of a junior? If so, that would be wonderful. Thank you for reading this message. She was mortified, whispering, Oh my god, I sent this? Sura couldn't believe it. How could I write something so long after getting drunk? Is this real? Even if I drink a lot, I thought I wouldn't get drunk. Obviously, I was wrong. She lowered her head and handed the phone back to him. I'm really sorry. I didn't think I'd do something so stupid. Seyun Hien looked at her, still searching for answers. You wrote it yourself, so you should be able to explain it, right? Sura hesitated. Well, you were sitting right across from me, waiting for an answer, she thought, fearfully deliberating her words. She couldn't help but imagine Seyun Hien's handsome face, which kept appearing in her mind. It might have been a polite way to say no, but when I met you, I felt something, she confessed, her voice trembling slightly. Sura couldn't bring herself to speak. Seyun Hien observed her actions and then sat back, reflecting. I don't know what you're trying to say, but you don't need to give me a long answer, he said gently. I just have one question for you, I often think about you and miss you. What about you? Sura was stunned by the straightforward question, thinking to herself, this, it's a question that shouldn't be worrisome. I think about him every day after filming, to the point where I mistakenly believe the person in front of me is just a breeze growing stronger in my heart. But how will he react if I say that? I'm both scared and curious. What should I do in the end? She continued to remain silent, unable to confess her feelings. Both of them fell back into an awkward silence. Seyun Hien recalled the conversation with Wang Su earlier that morning. Wang Su had been genuinely surprised when he found out, what? She said that and then hung up? So, you're meeting Sura today? Seyun Hien replied, I sent her the address and time this morning, so I'll go to the studio directly at noon. Wang Su had shared his honest thoughts, Seyun Hien, it's still too early for you to say those things. Do you think Sura will accept? Seyun Hien confidently replied, I don't think so. Wang Su, filled with questions, asked, aren't you afraid that Wang Sura will reject you? Hien remained steadfast, no, I'm not. Frustrated, Wang Su exclaimed, look at you. That's why I said it. I also think that when you confess, there's no way she won't respond positively. Wang Su had given some advice earlier, saying, everyone has a different approach. 
Maybe you don't need to worry, but Wang Sura might not be the same. These words made Se Yun Hian reflect and feel a bit anxious. After a period of silence between them, Sura finally spoke up, Senior, hi. Just then, the phone rang, interrupting her. Se Yun Hian quickly apologized, Ah, I'm sorry. She forced a smile, It's okay. He decided, I should answer this, otherwise it won't be good. He started the conversation, Hello, no, I haven't asked yet. Of course not. She sat there, listening to the entire phone call. Who is it? She wondered. Suddenly, a stranger appeared, saying, I'm here. I didn't even know the name of the cafe, so I was wandering around. Seyun Hien was taken aback. Why did you suddenly come? How am I supposed to handle this? Sura, surprised, thought to herself, he looks so old-fashioned. The friend replied, I've been waiting for a long time. You didn't call, so I didn't know if your phone died or something. Seyun Hien, feeling a bit frustrated, asked, I did call, what are you talking about? His friend casually sat down, laughing, come on, let's go over here. Sura felt a vague familiarity with the person in front of her, but no matter how much she thought, she couldn't remember. The stranger noticed her confusion and took the initiative to introduce himself. Oh my, it seems like you know me? Anyway, it's our first meeting, so should I introduce myself a bit? Nice to meet you, I'm Jang Minsong, director of some of the most famous music videos. Se Yun Hien interjected, is that really necessary? Sura quickly stood up, smiling brightly, oh, yes, nice to meet you. I'm Wang Sura. The two shook hands, getting acquainted. Min Song responded warmly, yes, nice to meet you too. Sura silently noted to herself, he's more friendly than I thought. Jang Min Song used to be a model, and now he's the director of numerous impressive music videos. That's really impressive. She marveled aloud, wow, you're really talented. Curious, she asked, why did you come here? Min Song, seeming somewhat oblivious, replied, Right, it's an honor, isn't it? I'm very honored. He shook her hand repeatedly as he spoke. Se Yun Hien, noticing Sura's discomfort, asked, Are you okay? Sura, looking downcast, questioned, Senior, how did things turn out this way? He quickly tried to explain, I'm sorry. Actually, I wanted to ask your opinion first before, well, you see, the truth is. Min Xian interrupted their conversation, don't talk about that anymore, Wang Sura. She startled and replied, yes. He extended his hand and asked her, Wang Sura, do you want to be famous? Hearing about fame, her eyes lit up like car headlights. The thing is, Director Jang had a big problem last night. No, it's not like that. He angrily slammed the table. Immediately, Se Yun Hien gently asked, what is it? Min Xian shouted in despair, that character. He seemed to be too familiar with this, muttering, not again. Director Jang clutched his head as if he was about to go mad. Impossible. When we met, everything was fine, but why did they only do well then? They didn't do anything during the filming, though. I think I only got 100 views. He asked curiously, whose film is it? Min Xian replied, Se Yun Hian, do you know that movie too? Idol Min Xian continued to complain, the comeback is coming soon, I'm going crazy. I thought the audition would go smoothly, but who knew there would be a problem? He asked with concern, what's wrong with the role? Min Xian, furious, replied, it's not the role but the uprising. A woman with a deep emotional wound finds new love, but because of her deep wound, she's afraid to love again. She's attracted to the new love but too scared to accept it. She's about to give up, but keeps thinking about that person. But no actor can express that emotion. Of course, I'll find another actor. Even if I can find the old one, there are plenty of new faces out there. After hearing director Jang's script, he sat deep in thought. A woman with a deep emotional wound? The role of Suji is somewhat similar to this character. Even under harsh conditions, director Gu was very strict about acting skills. I think she could do well in this role. He then suggested to his friend, I know someone, but... Min Xian perked up and asked, Really? Who? Se Yun Hien confidently replied, Wang Sura. This left Min Xian momentarily stunned. 
he quickly went online to look up information about this girl. Wang Sura. Just a moment. Meanwhile, Seyun Hien read a message on his phone that made him ponder. Min Xian suddenly exclaimed, making him very curious, do you know her? What's up? Min Xian hesitated for a few seconds before responding, she's attractive, but she seems a bit too old for this role. Seyun Hien was shocked, what? If you think she's too old, how old do you want her to be? Give it a rest. Even if your work involves societal standards, the search results show Wang Sura, a culinary expert born in 1956, a female Korean actress from E Company. He silently questioned if Min Sian was really this incompetent or just didn't think things through. Finally, Min Sian found the correct person, there's an actress with the same name. Is this her? Actress Wang Sura. Her profile picture looks fine, but she doesn't have any standout works. How do you know her to recommend her to me? Seyun Hien replied, we filmed together before. Min Sian pondered, really? If Kong Seyun Hien thinks it's okay, then it probably is. He then turned to Seyun Hien and asked, have I met her before? Seyun Hien explained, at Mi Young's wedding, the one who was eating soup and wearing glasses. Min Sian was surprised, what? That was her? Oh my, that's an unusual connection. It seems like there's something between you two. You have feelings for her, don't you? Seyun Hien quickly denied it, no, but I kind of wish I did. Min Sian felt embarrassed for him, oh my, Kong Seyun Hien, really? Come on, say something, do something. Seyun Hien, feeling panicked, responded, all right, stop it. Just then, a notification sound from a phone rang out, waking director Jang from his daze. He looked over and saw Seyun Hien sleeping soundly, mumbling to himself, when did he fall asleep? I was listening to the love story of a Hallyu star. Director Jang noticed the message wasn't his, Kong Seyun Hien, you have a message. Half awake, Seyun Hien responded, yeah. Min Sian stood there, unsure of what to do, don't you want to read it? What if it's from someone you want to hear from? Hearing that, Seyun Hien immediately sprang up as if there were a spring behind him. Min Sian teased him, no private notification or anything. Seyun Hien sat reading the message from Sura, sorry for texting you so late, I'm Wang Sura. It's an honor to have your guidance. He stared at the phone in surprise as he continued reading, actually, I recently went through something very hurtful, so I might need some time to feel better and figure out if someone is genuinely sincere with me. Can you be just a senior who looks after a junior? If you could, that would be great. Reading this part, he felt puzzled. What is this, he thought. Director Jang's curiosity was as clear as day, what are you talking about? Seyun Hien decided to call Sura, did she fall asleep while sending the message? On the other end, a voice said, hello. That sweet, melodious voice made his heart flutter. She quickly said, senior. He worriedly asked, why? Sura was surprised, huh? How do you know? He explained, you sent me a message. I don't understand any of it. Min Sian still couldn't believe it. Really? It's her? Sura nervously said, that's strange. I was careful when I pressed send. Did I wake you up? He replied, no, I haven't slept yet. Are you outside? His friend standing beside him kept laughing. You haven't slept, huh? Seyun Hien, trying to handle the annoying friend while talking on the phone, said, so, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's meet to clear up what you sent me. I'll send you the time and place tomorrow. Min Sian couldn't stop teasing, you're such a man. Kong Seyun Hien, you're so cool. Embarrassed, he turned and asked, there wouldn't be any problem if you just went to sleep, right? He asked again, but anyway, you're meeting her tomorrow, right? It's better to meet the person introduced from outside, isn't it? Seyun Hien declined, no, not tomorrow, another time. Ignoring Seyun Hien's words, he continued, what should I wear tomorrow? I should leave a good impression on our first meeting, right? Did I show you the jacket I bought from Mark? Seyun Hien exclaimed in desperation, Hey! Jang Min Sian, no! Don't go tomorrow! He laughed and said, Right! Wearing that jacket is the best choice! Can't wait! 
Se Yun Hien, feeling helpless, said, I told you not to come tomorrow, did you hear me? Returning to reality, when thinking about the reason for this three-way meeting, Min Xian chuckled nervously and said, That's right, that's why I came here. Sura laughed in bewilderment, Yes. Min Xian conversed with her as if they were close friends, I'm also curious about you. Honestly, does Kong Se Yun Hien only introduce talented people? Upon hearing his name, Se Yun Hien immediately interjected, What? It's just something I should do. Those words made Sura's heart race. That, she asked hesitantly, do you think my acting in that movie was good? He extended an invitation, why don't you audition then? I really like you, Sura. She was surprised, of course, it's an honor for me. Excitedly, Min Xian asked, really? When can you audition? I'm in a bit of a hurry, as I mentioned. Se Yun Hien suggested, since I don't have any plans today, let's go right now. From one surprise to another, Sura was taken aback again, why? Right now? As soon as they finished speaking, both of them stood up, urging her, let's go to my studio right away. She was flustered, it's not that simple, you too. Se Yun Hien turned to ask if she couldn't go now. She hesitantly looked at him and thought to herself, suddenly auditioning like this is a bit, but why would I miss this valuable opportunity? After some hesitation, she confidently made her decision, no, I'll go. Min Xian and Sung Hyun smiled, their eyes focused on her. Sung Hyun said, all right, Sura, Sung Hyun will send you the address and you can come after I leave. I really want to go together, but if we're caught, it will be complicated. Standing behind them, she watched the two of them. Upon reflection, she realized that as a public figure, they had to be concerned about such matters. It had been seven years since she had felt this way. She needed to tell Jean Kyung about the audition, but if she mentioned it, Jean Kyung would definitely rush over. It would be better not to bother her for now. She would wait until she got home to tell her.